This show is being brought to you by the Thomas Allen Collection. The Thomas Allen Collection is a men's accessory line designed to attract and capture a variety of tastes with a unique appeal. Thomas Allen strives to produce an extraordinary design to turn a new leaf on fashion for men and at desired occasions. If I told you once, I told you several times on this podcast that um, when ladies get your men a Thomas Allen Collection tie, they'll love it. Gentlemen, get you a Thomas Allen Collection tie. Uh, you can't go wrong with rocking a Thomas Allen Collection tie at a formal event. I'll be rocking one in an upcoming um, at the CBC events. Uh, BG, don't you own the uh, Thomas Allen Collection tie? Yes, sir. And they way fly than anything that's already out there. I got a couple of them, so I uh, recommend going out there and getting some of that flay. Yep, Thomas Allen Collection. Um, you can reach him at 678 960-9171-678-960-9171. Thomas Allen, when time or not really counts. Now on to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, a classic. A classic. This love. It's been a long, long time coming. But I know a change don't come. Yeah, I chose the path. The path shows me. It's a law plan, divine decree, natural high, little sheep, up in parallel view, let the ghetto sheep, BK, and OLA, OMF, GLD, Amazing Grace. Welcome to the Free Life Podcast, home of the New South Movement. This is your boy, Tight Tight, one half of the Free Lunch Podcast duo, the hottest duo in the South. I got my main man, B Jeezy, with me. B Jeezy. What's happening? Uh, ain't nothing, my brother. I'm just trying to stay off the Ashley Madison list. Free Love Podcast. What's that? <laughs> you going to go right into hey, it off the hey, top. I'm going to die. Gonna... We, we on the same page with that, man. That Ashley Madison is breaking up households all across the country. I was reading it today. I was doing a little, a little um, just research on, 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 on the whole Alice, Alice, Allison Madison case, Ashley, Ash. Madi- Ashley Madison case website because I wasn't familiar with it. And and they're saying like over what thirty million names got leaked, and they they actually saying that due to the um, the hacking event and episode, um, a couple of men have committed suicide. Did you even read that? I saw that man, and you like me, I didn't know anything about that until somebody brought my attention to the articles that was coming now. And on top of that, Alabama was hot too. I was uh, on the uh, Facebook today, and somebody has access to the list of Alabama names on there. And that sucker about about 100 pages long, man. So call, was, call them out. I, you want to call them I out? I was checking. Nah, I ain't going to call them out, but I was checking to make sure none of the family was on there, though, for sure. <laughs> your, your boy Arthur was on there. I heard. I heard. Arthur Davis. Dummy. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur Davis, man. That, that dude is the epitome of can't get right. He can't get right, dog, and his hair can't get right either. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. What what, got, what what role does he hold? What office does he um hold now? He he doesn't hold anything right now, but he is running for mayor of Montgomery. Oh, but is I he? Think, I think yeah, I think that went out the window though. Running for mayor of Montgomery, mayor of Montgomery, and he's on the Ashley Madison case. Yeah, him and a bunch of other folk. There's some Selma folks on there. Really You're crazy, bro. You're crazy, but like I say, I'm just glad I wasn't on there. Wow. Well, I I, I couldn't be on there because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I couldn't I True. couldn't be I couldn't even be on there because I know nothing about Ashley Madison. Well, I would have thought thing. that was a reality superstar had someone said Ashley Madison, you was on Ashley Madison's list. I would have thought that was a was a reality TV show. But you know what, man? I think it's one of them old country club things. The big ballers. When they just sitting around smoking their cigars at the, so, at the country club. The, yeah, country club talk because, you know, <laughs> it looked like some high-profile people on that thing. I, I, <laughs> I didn't see no names that I recognized, so I don't think it's, it's popularized amongst the average joke. Well, how does that conversation go? Excuse me, sir. Um, just went yeah. out last night with my Ash- Ashley Madison date. Is that how I go? Probably start off like that, and if you want to have a good time, why you on this trip or something? Log on. Your wife will never know. <laughs> Unless the website get hacked. That's the part you don't account for. So so another topic because we got a special guest with us today. 
And I want to make certain that we give her ample time. I know that she shaved her head. Uh, which I would be really interested in hearing more about. Uh, but I did want to kind of briefly touch on the stock market. Got up this morning, stock market was down, the Dow was down a 1,000 points. What's really going on? Thought the world was coming to an end when I walked into work, once again, oblivious to all the happiness that's going on. But I, my, my coworkers was like in a straight-up panic because, you know, I work with, with um, some older people. So, that stock market is important. I think they have been putting money into different stocks and are getting to that point the way they're getting ready to retire. And so they count that money as some of their retirement funding, but wake up today and it's like it's, it's having a historical fall. And one of the ladies actually went in and, and transferred whatever, whatever she had left on the spot. So it was crazy this morning. Yeah, they was talking about it this morning on the Tom Joyner. You know, they do the sitcom with um, – with uh, Melanie Hobson and she and and, and Selbu this morning actually was kind of was she said she was on 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 the ledge and and she was thinking about getting out and and Melanie was saying no just hold tight for now because everything always it always comes back full circle but but I'm really more interested in in what's the motive behind the media releasing that information or or the whole Dow Jones going down today. Like I'm trying to understand what's what's the hidden agenda because I think it's more to to it than just just what we see on the surface level. Over the last couple of years, we've had such drastic growth, especially over in China. So the numbers were like astronomically good for a great span of time, and now the thing is starting to kind of balance out. But then that balancing out doesn't look as good as it was in the past. So now people are in this panic like, oh, my God, is the, the, the economy is about to totally collapse when probably in reality it's just resetting and coming back down to like real time numbers. But for me, you know, I asked that question, too, when I talk is like, well, well, why is it so significant at this point in time um, for you and I on a day to day basis? What what does that mean? Um, and and then of course in going and researching it, you, you get people like Donald Trump, presidential candidate or whatever. He makes a st- a statement about if we didn't do so much business in China and overseas, we wouldn't have these type of financial crises. So that raises the question of is there some other story or some other reason for releasing this? Is this to set the stage for this upcoming political season? That type of thing. So. I'm I'm really um, curious to know why so much energy is being put into it. And then you have to also wonder if, if those are buzzwords that trigger that type of reaction globally, you know. Right. You know, you just never know the hidden agendas and the hidden messages in a lot of in a lot of these type of certain reactions. And then you look and you see the price of uh, oil is going down. Is that all time low since 2009? Yeah. So, so it's, because because I mean the the premise behind all of that, they're saying that um, that with the with the surgeons and and looking for alternative ways to to capture to to get oil and and that and that sort of thing, that that caused the that's the cause and effect in the oil actually being uh, down to its lowest cost in since two thousand and nine, and so. I don't know. I'm just kind of intrigued by by all of that, but but not to bore the audience anymore. We do have a special guest. Yes, we do. And I'm really excited because really this this type of, this guest in particular, I met her um, a, a little over a year ago, and I've I've really just been intrigued by <laughs> social media, Instagram, and just following her Instagram post and her passion that she has for um, for what we're going to talk about today. And a lot of that is health, um, training, and, and in particular, her niche is juicing. And so I really wanted to have her on the show because um, I actually purchased or I actually have a juicer, and I wanted to start using mine a little bit more frequently um, just to see how what would be the end results. Um, really triggered by her passion and her many posts where she's just very passionate about juicing. And just from talking with her over the last few days, 
BG, I just I got I got inspired. I said, well, we need to have her on the show. She's passionate. She she loves this stuff, and and I think I think the audience, particularly the Southern audience, is going to be really intrigued by what she has to say um, from this conversation. So, uh, with no further ado, I would like to introduce the audience to Danny. Um, and allow her to kind of say hi to, to everyone. And um, we really are thankful for you being on the show today. Well, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. BJ, did you want to say hi? Well, I just want to say hello to Danny. Glad to have you on this show joining us today. And, and I, for, the, for the listeners, I hope that they've been paying attention over these last few weeks. You know, we having people on here that are actually doing something, people that are leaving careers and following their their passion and purpose and people that are stepping out on courage and faith and really listening to their spirit to make things happen so um this one will not be um any different from that Uh, it's going to be an exciting story and hopefully people will get something from that that can change their lives and you know get them on the right track of having better health so welcome dan yeah man bg just so you'll know danny um bg does have a background in health and so BG and I kind of talk about health a lot, specifically just health in the in our community, and just knowing how there's a lot of hypertension, um, there's a lot of diabetes, and just a lot of disease that are caused from from obesity, um, to be quite frank. And so that was another reason, like I mentioned earlier when I was introducing you, um, there's a niche on the East Coast. And that niche, in my opinion, for those of you, the um, Free Lunch fam that are listening, Danny and I are in our D.C. studios. And, um, you know, on on the East Coast, you would agree that there's been, especially in, I know in New York for sure, there are a number of juicing um, facilities. Um, In D.C., I see a large number of juicing facilities growing. Um, But before we even jump into that, when did you shave your hair? I shaved my head, well, only the sides, but I shaved them on Thursday. Did you? Yep. I wanted a new look. And, okay. So ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so it looks nice on you. For, for the listeners, I, when we post the pictures, you'll get a chance to see, to see Danny's new, new, new hairdo. But I'm um, getting back to the point. Danny, what's your, what's your Instagram, Dan? Uh, vegan Fit. Danny, and that's V E G A N F I T D A N N I. Getting back to the to the original question before I kind of took us off the off 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 track. Can you talk a little bit about juicing? Um, just from a historical, my bad. <laughs> just from <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Dog, are you on Instagram right now? <laughs> are you on Instagram right now? Yes, sir. I don't ask for nothing. <laughs> What's wrong with that? So, so can you talk about juicing and, and the historical um, perspective around juicing and how you got started? Absolutely. So juicing has um, dated back hundreds of years. Um, people way back then, they found a way to extract the juice by squeezing fresh produce, and that would extract the juice. So that has been around for a while and people saw the benefits of drinking fresh juice because of how they felt. So now um, juicing, I guess because of social media, it has become more of a a trend or something that people are really interested in because they're seeing it online and they're seeing that people are benefiting from it. But juicing has been around for decades, for hundreds of years. And not only on the East Coast is it taking off, but also in on the West Coast. I mean, California has tons of juice shops. Um, the California area, they're um, they're also very health conscious down there. So they have tons of vegan, vegetarian restaurants, juice shops. Miami, warm weather areas also have a lot of these places, but they're popping up all over the country. So you, more than likely, wherever you're at, you can find somewhere that is close to you. And on top of that, if you can't, there's a lot of juice companies that also ship directly to you. So you have options if you're looking for um, a way to get juicing, get the juices without having to do it yourself. 
And and I do want to get to that, BG, so so that the audience know, Danny has started her own juicing company. And before we get off this podcast, I want to make certain that you leave your information, Instagram. Um, you mentioned that earlier, but we can get it, and uh, we can also get it when we get off. But also, um, you can talk about the different types of juice and different programs that you have available. So I definitely want to make certain we get to that point. But let's let's take even a step back. Um, and, and what I found interesting was you lost, um, is it okay for me to say how much? Absolutely. Okay, you lost 40 pounds um, over how long? Over, over? Um, it's been since I started March of 2004. 14. So almost 18 months that I've been on my journey. But initially that first 35 pounds was lost in about five months. Really? Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. So, so what triggered this, this, this journey for you? So you've lost 40 pounds. Um, like you mentioned earlier, 35 of those were in the first five months. What was the, can you give us a background and some perspective as to what forced you to kind of transform your body so since the age of i would say 12 years old i have um, i've struggled with my weight just up and down eating a lot of fast food junk food processed foods things that were convenient because um i was home a lot by myself and i had to just eat things that were quick so between 12 and honestly the moment that I made the decision a year and a half ago to lose weight, I just went up and down with my weight and always struggled because I tried fad diets. I tried, you know, Atkins and all those other things and they just never worked. They worked immediately, but not over the long run. So I finally decided I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being fat. <laughs> and so I said, you know what, I'm going to just take the action instead of worrying about the weight loss, I just got in the gym five times a week and I did my meal prep and I made my food twice a week so that I would have my food ready to go every day and I didn't have to think about it. So as long as I was prepared, then I was good. But at that time, um, I was eating, um, I guess, a clean standard diet, um, lean fish, lean chicken, fruits and vegetables, um, brown rice, and I just kept it real clean and I didn't, um, I barely ate out. I would probably eat out maybe once a week, if that, but I really try to limit how much I ate out because I know how detrimental eating out can be for my, for, for my progress. I also slowed down with drinking alcohol because I'd rather eat my calories than drink them. Um, so there's a period of time where I didn't drink any alcohol and actually to this day, I still don't drink alcohol, but, um, I'll get to that point in a second as to why, but, um, about five months, four months after I started this journey, I was introduced to a vegan challenge where for 21 days they would give me the recipes and also online support. So I signed up because I wanted to take my weight loss journey to the next level. So I figured I could try anything for 21 days. So did it for 21 days. But what, what, what was really crazy was in the first two days, I lost four pounds. But mind you, I'd already lost 25 pounds at this point. I was eating a pretty clean diet. So I was very shocked that I had lost so much in such a short period of time, but it was my body detoxing. So over the next 21 days, I continued with it and 21 days has now become 13 months. I am still a vegan and I've also tried um, raw veganism, which is a whole different level of being vegan. This is where you eat nothing but fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and nothing is cooked over 118 degrees. So once I tried the vegan lifestyle, that's when I was introduced to juicing. I purchased a juicer and I just tried new recipes. I tried things that I found online. And honestly, juicing was more so for convenience. I knew I needed to eat my five fruits and vegetables per day. And actually, you shouldn't have more than that. But um, it was easier for me to put it all in a juice and take it with me so that wherever I was at, I had everything that I needed to fully nourish my body. But then I started noticing how good I felt. I almost felt like 
I mean, my mental clarity was amazing. I felt so energetic just from drinking juice. And you would think that you would be hungry, but in actuality, you are full and you're satisfied because your body is now being um, given all the proper um, vitamins and minerals that your body requires. When you lost the, the 25 pounds and you were going to training, um, you haven't spoken about the type of training you're doing now. But where you're going to a traditional gym, um, I know you don't go to a traditional gym now, and I do want to get to the type of exercise and training that you do today. But in those first few months, what type of gym were you were you going to? Um, at that time, I was working out at a traditional sports club, and I went to fitness group fitness classes. That was easier for me, even though my whole life, well, since high school, I knew how to weight train and I love weight training, but it was harder for me to go into that sports club and just hit the weights and stay committed to it. So going to uh, fitness group fitness classes were better for me because they were scheduled. I knew at 8.30 a.m. I had to be somewhere and it held me accountable. And then the same people go to the same classes. So I made friends in those classes. And if I didn't show up, they would be like, where is she at? And then when I come back the next day, I might feel bad because I missed a day. So I tried not to. So that, you know, it helped me stay on track by going every single day to a class. I knew that was going to start at mm -hmm. a certain time. Mm -hmm. If you can think back to when you first kind of started going down this road and changing your, your eating patterns and the type of foods that you were eating, um, do you remember, like, in that first week or so how your body felt? Because I know in the end you feel better, but in that, that first period, it, it, it's kind of a shock to the system. So can you reflect on how you might have felt in those first few days? Sure. Um, as far as the training part, I felt very sore because I had – you know, I hadn't been training for a while and the classes, thankfully, the classes that I attended, my instructors were amazing. They were, they're really into fitness. So they gave me a great workout. So I felt sore. So that was just, a, that was a good thing for me. I like to be sore. And I, even back then when I was, well, it wasn't fit. I knew that when I was sore, I was doing something right. And then as far as the, um, the food side, I actually felt I felt good. I, I did feel a little fatigued because I was changing what I was doing. And, but because I was prepared and I was really like, my mind was set on what I was going to embark on. I, I think those negative things didn't really affect me as much as they had in the past because I was just so, I had a positive mindset and I knew I was going to accomplish the goal that I set ahead of me. This wasn't your first attempt at, at a lifestyle change, because I think that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a lifestyle change. What was different this go-round that, that propelled and jump-started this lifestyle change than in the past? See, when they say that um, it's got to click for you, it really does have to click, because what you mean? as far as when you're ready... Because people can, you can be motivated, you can be inspired, but if you're really not ready mentally to put your head down and just do the work, then you're not going to do it. And that was me years ago. I wanted to do it. I knew what to do. I knew how to do it, but I wasn't focused. I wasn't, I wasn't that sick and tired, you know, and I felt like I looked fine, even though I was 40 pounds heavier. You wouldn't look at me and consider me fat. You would probably just say, oh, she's thick. And in our community, it's not bad to be thick. You want to be thick. You want to have a body. So right. I think when you have, you're still getting, you know, attention from the opposite sex, you feel like, okay, well, I'm still doing it, so I'm all right. right. But then when you know your insides are crying for help, they're crying for some water, for some nutrients, for you to lose some weight, then... You know, you just have to make that decision. And so for me, it just clicked one day. And I said, I'm sick and tired of my, having knee problems because I am carrying too much weight. I'm tired of having digestion problems. I'm tired of just my skin breaking out, feeling fatigued, and just not feeling as sexy as I want it to be. What are your friends saying when, they, when they're noticing that you're eating differently and you're not drinking when you go out? Well, the drinking thing is, <laughs> it's funny because... 
Um, most of my friends, they, they've watched my journey and they understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. But when I meet new people and they're like, dang, you don't drink. Like, how do you get through life without drinking? Or, you know, it's just one drink, but no one drink adds up to another drink. And honestly, if I have one drink, one drink's not going to do me any good. So I might as well have more if I'm, if that's the goal that I'm trying to obtain. If I want to be tipsy, then I need to have more, but then I don't like how my body I feels feel. afterwards. Yeah, I don't like that. And then with my healthy lifestyle, with what I'm eating, I feel so high off life that I don't need to get drunk to have a good time. I can go out and all my girls, they might be drinking and I'm not, I'm drinking. I, I get mocktails. So I might get like a cranberry with a uh, Sprite or something right. and a lime in it. So I look like I'm drinking. So I still look social. Um, but, um, but they're having a good time and I'm having a good time too. So there's respect on both sides. Cause I don't judge what other people do. Cause I know it's a process in order to get there, but, and they don't, you know, they don't make me feel bad for the, the decisions that I've decided to make. Going back to the, when you decided to actually make a lifestyle change, um, where were you emotionally in, during that period? You mentioned your insides and that kind of thing. Were you in any type of depression or in, uh, anxiety phase, or where were you? Um, I I don't like to use the word depression just because it's so it's so harsh. But I definitely was extremely sad, and I wasn't happy with myself. And I th and I know now because of the foods that I was eating that kind of controlled my mental state hmm. but at that time i remember a week before i um decided to make the change i went out of town for a week to watch my goddaughter at while um her parents went on vacation and that week it was just me and her we stayed in the house a lot because she was three months old at the time so i was in the house and i just remember eating a lot and being by myself in that moment i had a lot of time to think and I just got more and more just disgusted with myself the more that I was eating, but I wouldn't stop eating because I honestly felt like I had an addiction to sugar and to salt and, and processed foods. So I emotionally was low and I felt like, you know, maybe I can't do it. Maybe I just should just be fat and give up. But then when I went back home, I was like, no, I don't want to feel like how I felt last week. I felt disgusted and I just wanted to make a change. And I knew that that was it. I was over it and I was ready to change and, and feel better about myself. But little did I know that by me changing my eating habits, that that would help me feel more emotionally stable and happy about everything in my life. Yeah, you said the word that addiction, like there are a lot of cases to where, um, people are overeating because they're using that food as a way of, of medicating, much in the same way that some people use actual drugs to medicate or take them away from whatever it is that they're feeling on the inside, if there's some pain or some sadness. And, and, then, and then in that, you have these food, the sugar, like she said, and all these other um, foods that are manufactured that have these ingredients that basically your system gets hooked on and, and, and it feel makes you feel like you have to have those things to function, especially sugar. Um, something that the body just continuously calls on. So, so those are some very interesting points. And that's something that, you know, when we go down this road of talking about food and making these choices to be forever mindful of. Absolutely. I totally agree with, um, with what you just said about sugar. I recently found a documentary on YouTube. I think it's called the truth about sugar. And in that documentary it was talking about how sugar actually fires off in your brain the same way as heroin. It's a definitely an addiction. And every food item, pretty much, that's in the grocery store, that's on those center line, center center aisles, has sugar. Even something that's supposed to be healthy, like um, dressing, salad dressing, it has tons of sugar in it. And they do that purposely so that it becomes more appealing to the tongue, and they can sell more that way. Mm -hmm. Keep Andrew, you coming back. Yeah. You you also said something. You started your your vegan diet, and when you started the vegan diet. Um, you lost four four pounds immediately, and you talked about um, you were going into the vegan diet, but can you kind of talk about that detoxing period, the food that, that, that you were eating, and why you were responding the way you were responding? 
as a vegan, your major food categories are going to be fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Beyond that, um, well, let me first say that when I transitioned, I transitioned as a plant-based vegan. So you can be a vegan and you can eat junk food like Oreos are vegan. Certain potato chips are vegan. But we all know if you sit around and eat Oreos and potato chips all day, you're not going to lose weight. You're probably not going to be healthy at all. Mm -hmm. But I was a plant-based vegan, so that means that it basically has to grow out of the ground for me to consume it. I don't eat packaged foods. If it's packaged, it has to have no more than two ingredients. Like, for instance, if I buy peanuts, peanuts and salt, that's about it. Or if I buy rice, rice is the only ingredient on that list. So... When I first transitioned, I cut out all the things that can help, that aid in blocking your digestion. So meat, especially red meat, it's going to slow down your digestion. It basically rots in your stomach. It doesn't, Lord. Help, it doesn't help move things. So talk about the 30% that you were telling. They, oh. can't, they can't hear me, but BG, this is what caught me. Well, this is what pulled me in when we got on this kind of digestive system and the energy and everything so so when you're juicing you're you're giving your body a chance to rest it takes 30 percent of your energy to digest food so and red meat, for example, so right? yeah and red meat stays in your body for a very long time and so it's just using energy to try to push it push it through but when you juice you don't have to, your, your digestion doesn't have to break anything down. It's already broken down and all of those um, vitamins and minerals are easily absorbed into your body and is allocated where it needs to go. So that 30% of energy now gets used in other ways, either through you're going to be able to stay up longer. You might go, go hard for 18 hours and then sleep for another, you know, six hours and then that's it. Like you're good and you wake up refreshed. Um, you also might have a better workout because you have more energy to give. So a lot of people think that on juicing, oh my gosh, I'm not eating any food. I'm just drinking juice all day. I'm probably going to be hungry. I'm going to be tired. But the exact opposite is true because you're not hungry because your stomach is empty. You're hungry because your body is craving minerals and vitamins and antioxidants that it needs in order to properly function and so once you start feeding your body that then you start feeling more satisfied where you don't have to keep grabbing things that you're going to eat binge eat like potato chips and candy and things of that nature mm-hmm. so when you That's, go ahead that range true um I, I haven't done the juicing but i do know that around the time when i um do the annual fast um, for for my church or whatnot, those same things. You're, you're, I mean, you feel ten times better, more energy. You feel light, and, and and that energy. I guess that's what what makes you have that that clarity to where your thought processes are are more advanced, and you seem like you're getting more accomplished because that energy is being redirected in, into more beneficial areas. Absolutely, so. and that fast. If you're speaking of the um, Daniel's fast, that is basically a a plant-based vegan diet. So those that do participate, if you've never done that, you've been vegan for at least 30 days. And like you said, you experience great positive, um, positive things because of that. And that's what I have experienced for the last 13 months. And if you even take it to the next level, like being a raw vegan, that is just a whole different level. Like, I would describe that as being feeling euphoric. Like that's how amazing it feels because your diet is really, really clean and your, your brain, which feeds off of carbs, not processed carbs, but fruit carbs, Mm -hmm. your brain is going to flourish and function and you're going to accomplish things that you never thought you would be able to. You started to break out. What was happening during, during that particular period and how did you respond mentally and physically when you saw these kind of your body reacting to to I guess some of the junk that you had put in there previously when you're detoxing there's a there's many symptoms that you'll have that might seem like something bad is happening but it's actually your body telling you that it's working so you might experience fatigue you might experience a headache uh, migraine your face might break out and um you'll definitely be using the restroom a lot more but these are all these are all signs showing you that your body is toxic 
and that it's pushing it out either through your bowel movements, your through urination, or through your, your pores. And more than likely, when you detox, your face ends up breaking out, unfortunately. But when that happens, I was prepared for it. And it kind of was because I, I, I love my face and I like the skin that I have because I, I typically have good skin, even if I was eating junk. But when I started breaking out, and I knew it was because it was showing me my body is toxic. Then I realized I don't want to go back to that state anymore. Let me let me just get through the hump of it because I know my skin's going to be beautiful once I get over that hump. And then not go back to that old lifestyle because I never want my face to feel like that. And I definitely don't want to know that my body is toxic. So it, ke- it kind of keeps me on track. And now if I say I eat something that's quote unquote vegan junk food, like French fries, it's fried in oil and oil immediately reacts to my skin. So now the minute I eat French fries that next morning, I might be waking up with a breakout, but it's a reminder like, I shouldn't have ate that last night. Let me juice all day and clear this up, and then it's gone. When I was looking at this stuff, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen if I juice because I'm going to have all kind of stuff coming out of my body. <laughs> all all of toxins. All these years and years of toxins you in got, my system, I'm scared. You got to start somewhere, though. You do. You do got to start somewhere, but I kind of want, okay, what is, so now you do you eat food at all, or do you just drink juice all day, every day? No, I definitely eat food. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm so um, you on you on Instagram with all these different watermelon, mint juice, and <laughs> apple and kale juice and cucumber and and I'm like, damn, is that all you eat? So like, <laughs> these are questions. where the food at? Where the food at? These are questions that the audience is asking. They what they tweeted us. <laughs> no, I do eat. Um, I do eat whole food, and um, but juicing is just a great way for me to start off my day. I really like to have juice first thing in the morning uh, just because it, it just makes me energetic and it starts me off right. And also in the morning, sometimes it's harder for me to eat a meal, so I'd rather just drink the juice. And I'm headed to the gym anyway, so it's just grab and go. But I do eat food. I eat, you know, vegetables and fruit, and I'll make – um, different things like I might make a vegan spaghetti or a vegan um, vegetable fajitas. You know, I, I can still make it fun. I can eat Indian food. I can eat every cuisine, but I just find a way to cut out the dairy, the meat, and um, any other animal byproducts. So, for the listeners that are listening, can you give us a quick day in the life of of, of, of Danny from the time you wake up until the time that you go to bed? If I'm trying to transform my life. I'm trying to have do something similar to what you did. What would be a typical meal day for you? Okay, so right now I'm training for a fitness competition. So my meals are not a, right now, then. Not, don't get are, <laughs> my meals right now are a little bit more. Um, I'm eating more often, so I'm eating at least five to six meals per day. But I can still give you an idea of what you can do. So it is good to eat often. You definitely want to keep your um, keep your metabolism revved up. So in the morning when I first wake up, first thing I have is lemon water. Lemon water is amazing, and you want to drink it room temperature. And it's amazing because it basically starts everything up. It it gets it's like turning the the key in the ignition. It gets digestion moving. It's gonna get um, all your internal organs turned on. It's gonna wake you up just mentally because that lemon is a little tangy, so it just wakes you up. Then after that, um, I'll have some some sort of juice. Or I might have my pre-workout smoothie because I'm usually on my way to the gym first thing. Then after the gym, I have um, my protein shake. Then I'll have for if I didn't have juice before the gym, then I'll have juice after that protein shake. Then for lunch, more than likely, it's going to be a veggie wrap um, with some fruit and vegetables on the side. And in my veggie wrap, I like to have... um, all sorts of vegetables like cucumber, carrots, hummus. Hummus is great for protein, so I add that in there. Um, or I'll have a big salad, and I usually go to the salad bar, and I just load up on every fruit and vegetable. I love fruit on uh, – so a tip, put fruit on your um, salads because it actually makes it a lot easier to to eat your whole salad because it's more satisfying when you're tasting something sweet. And then for dinner, um, my favorite vegan meal right now is – zucchini noodles 
with a, um, a fresh basil pesto. And I make all of this at home. I have a, a spiralizer that I put my um, zucchini in. And I just spin it around and it makes me noodles. So it's actually a great alternative to eating um, instead of eating pasta noodles. And it's, if you're trying to like cut out gluten or processed carbs, do zucchini noodles. And then my basil pesto, I throw everything in the blender, blend it up and pour it on and toss everything around and that's dinner. Oh, and then if I want to have something sweet for, for dessert, I always have frozen bananas or other frozen fruit in the freezer. So I'll pop that in the blender in my Vitamix, blend it up, and I have ice cream or sorbet. That's amazing because that's a lot, that's a lot of information. And do you have like a, a, a partner or a group of people that you share ideas and get recipes from, or do you do all this on your own? No, there is a huge community that supports me and that I help support as well. On Facebook, I found a whole um, group of different um, vegans and vegetarians. And even if you don't want to go that route, um, being a part of those groups are helpful for you to just incorporate at least one vegan meal into your diet and you'll see a difference. But if you go on Facebook, you can find um, like 21 Days to Plant-Based is my favorite group. That's actually the group that helped me transition. And if you go to www.21daystoplantbased.com, there's a challenge starting up soon. It's a 21-day challenge, and you get the meals and workout guides, and there's online support. So that's that's the main group that helps me. But a lot of times, because I I was a cook before. I mean, I still am a cook, but I used to I love to cook, and so um, I just take those same principles that I used before and adopt them to my, to my new lifestyle. Gotcha. So this is really interesting. And, and, <laughs> and I'm not trying to, it, it, we are talking to a Southern based audience, BG and two yes. things that come to mind. Where to meet <laughs> two things that come to mind is football season and, I'm, we're gonna start grilling, and we're gonna start putting meat on the grill. Right, and and that's the challenge when when you grow up in an entire, if your 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 entire way of life has been having meat and 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 enjoying the game. And then you know, I guess another question I would be interested in is, what does your meal look like on Thanksgiving? Because I'm I'm looking for ways personally. I'm looking for ways where I can juice. So, like I said, I've started juicing. You know, I, today I had, BG, I had apples and kale. And make sure he did it right. Yeah, 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 but I had it. But, see, I don't even know. I drink it this morning at 10 o'clock, but I don't even know if I got some watermelon cucumber in the refrigerator <laughs> right now. That sounds good. You know, I made strawberries yesterday, but I don't even know if what I'm doing is even even effective. How you feel? I don't know. I, I guess I feel fine. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I'm a, I'm a beginner in juicing. How would you, and then, I mean, I, I, I'm asking a lot of questions. So it's like three questions, out of, two questions. But the third one would be, um, you know, how, if I'm a beginner, how do I get started? My entire life I've grown up eating meat, and, 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 and I'm not trying to change everything, but I do want to incorporate juicing in my life. And I and I and, and I do want to. I think I'm gonna reap some benefits from incorporating it. You know, what can you tell somebody like me? So as far as juicing, I look at it at like getting an oil change in your car. Every three thousand miles, you get an oil change because it's time to clean things out and put something new and fresh in so that it runs it runs properly. Mm-hmm. So because say say for instance, you put the clean oil on top of the dirty oil. Mm-hmm. It's still going to be dirty oil. You got to take out the old oil and put in the new oil. So juicing kind of does that. So for someone who, for you, I would say a juice cleanse, if it's three days to five days, is a great way to really get started. Even if you're not going to, you know, go vegan or anything like that, you kind of clean the junk out and then on, you know, your first day back on your regular normal diet, you're eating more fruits and vegetables and incorporating a better diet, but you've kind of like reset and gotten ready for your new lifestyle. In a, in a juice cleanse, do you eat food or is it just juices? 
it's just juices like at um at my company which is sincerely raw um and you can go to www.sincerelyraw.com or um sincerely raw on Instagram and with our company we do a um we do a eight bottle cleanse so you have eight different juices throughout the day and every 2 hours you're drinking a juice but that's all you're consuming is just juice and distilled water and so another thing it is very important if you're doing any other juice cleanse and they tell you to drink any water don't don't trust that you need to be drinking only distilled water because for one it does not contain fluoride and fluoride is not good for your body um so you want to look up fluoride and see how it affects you because it's just not good for your brain function, but, um, definitely distilled water and you're going to be drinking at least a half a gallon of that per day, along with all eight juices and all that gets included in my juice cleanses that I offer, um, on my website. Does that cleanse, does that help with any of, like you say, the sugar addictions or does that help to, to kind of rid me of any of those addictions during those three to five days or not really? No, um, because it's, it's going to take a little bit more than that to really get past that addiction. And more than likely, if you feel like you're addicted to sugar or salt or anything, it's because you, your body probably has a parasite or multiple parasites. So you're going to want to do a parasite cleanse. So there's different things out there like um, diatomaceous earth is a, um, is a powder that you can add to your water and it will do a, parasite cleanse and parasites you might not even notice it coming out or you might see them coming out but either way you need to get rid of them if you eat meat if if you're a kid really if you're alive you have a parasite so check out a parasite cleanse google that online and you'll see information about it and that will help curve your cravings and get rid of that addiction that you have to sugar doing that right now exactly i got that got <laughs> Hey, I'm scared. I can't, can't go be to walking sleep around here with a parasite. Dog. I can't be walking around here with no parasites. So what are you? So so Thanksgiving. The, yeah, Thanksgiving. That's the second question. Yeah, Thanksgiving. What what does your meal look like on Thanksgiving? All right. So Thanksgiving last year it was my first vegan Thanksgiving, and I made. I had a really big salad and was everything that I wanted on it. And then on the side, I made macaroni and cheese, but it wasn't made with real um, dairy cheese. It was made with cashew cheese that I made at home myself. And it's really easy. You just throw cashews and almond milk and some other things in the blender. You blend that up and you can create this cheesy. Um, don't shake your head. You haven't even tried it. <laughs> you got um you blend that together and it gives you the same texture and taste as cheese. And I mixed that with at that time I was still eating gluten, so I mixed that with regular elbow noodles and that was my macaroni and cheese. And I made um sauteed kale and collards. Uh, I had cram my mom made cranberry relish because she makes that every year anyways. So I had that. I had corn. So I had tons of vegetables and they were just seasoned very well and everything tasted great. So I I honestly can't complain about my last last year's uh, Thanksgiving meal. But I had an epiphany over the last year that I've been vegan and I realized that my life needed to be less about food because I spent so many years trying to find like the best burger in town and the biggest steak and do those, you know, like man versus food type challenges. Like I can eat, you know, this one pound burger in 30 seconds. Like I, I, I stopped doing stuff like that. And I realized that food needs to be more, I mean, my life needs to be more about um, my experiences building better relationships with people and also becoming a better human being. So now my focus isn't, around food and so this thanksgiving honestly i don't know if i'll make quote-unquote thanksgiving food it might just be another day but my focus is more so sort of spending time with my family and enjoying that so that brings me into your first question about football season so you know i know you guys will be gathering and having a good time but you have to really focus on what you're really there for you can enjoy the game and enjoy your people with you but you can still do it healthfully what I would suggest is if you want to try to do something different, you can still do the same thing, but swap it out. So if you like to grill, it might not sound good, but it is good. So, <laughs> grill portobellas are really good. Portobello burgers are good. 
um, grilled, you know, corn. You can basically put all vegetables on the grill, and so it's going to give you that grilled flavor and that grill and that meat texture. But you're doing it healthfully, so you really have to. And then there's other cool like. Um, Cauliflower. If you fry cauliflower and then dip it in buffalo sauce, it's kind of like gives you the feeling like you're eating um, buffalo chicken nuggets. So there's different alternatives. You just have to Google or go on Pinterest. Pinterest is awesome. And just go on there and look up ideas. But on my blog, I'm always sharing ideas. So if you go to my um, – so I have a lifestyle, a vegan lifestyle blog. It's um, on Instagram. It's one rawsome life. And that's spelled O-N-E-R-A-W-S-O-M-E-L-I-F-E. And that's my lifestyle um, Instagram and blog. It's connected to that. And I just show, like, during football season, during Super Bowl, during Thanksgiving, really any holiday that's coming up, I always show great ideas on different alternatives to what you normally are going to um you'd normally want to eat and I give you alternatives that are healthier. But really, at the end of the day, it should be the decision on what is more important is your life and longevity and being here around for, for your kids, your grandkids, is that more important than that meal that you're going to have? That's not going to be healthy for your heart or your liver or digestion. So it's just up to you to make the decision on what is important in your life. There's a product that we, we see like in the vegetarian aisle or in the freezer um, that I haven't heard you talk about. What about soy? Personally, I am not an advocate for soy. Soy is not a product or a, um, it's not supposed to be consumed or ingested. So you all can go online and do your own research and come to your own conclusions. But I stay away from soy. Um, from what I hear, it's not good for, um, for your man parts if you're a guy. And definitely not for women either, because I think it lowers your estrogen levels. But don't quote me on that. You have to look it up. But I know from the research that I've done, soy is just not a product that you want to consume. So things like tofu are, to me, I don't think you need them. You can, I've survived a year without eating one bite of tofu or soy products. So I would say stay away from it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff out there that, that doesn't really support using it as well. So I was just wondering. Yeah, I mean, if you decide to do a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle or even in if, even if you continue to eat meat, just stay more plant-based. Eat more things that grow out of the earth. And things that are processed, if you look on the back of the label and you see more than two ingredients, I would say it's not something that you should consume. BG. Yes, sir. She blew my mind. Anything else that you you have personally? We got to talk about the business. Yeah, we do need to talk about the business and we also need to talk about how we we need to test out the out the out the cleansing stuff as sponsor. We need to we <laughs> need to get some of that. So um, I've been in business for uh, about four months now, and it's amazing because it started accidentally. I had um, I've been posting online my juices, and I had a friend who. Um, on my Instagram, she's like, oh, I can't wait to be your first customer. And at that time, I wasn't even talking about selling juices. And I was just like, I was like, okay, girl, like, whatever. So then she texts me and she's like, no, seriously, like, I want to start buying juice from you. So she started buying juice. And then somebody else was like, oh, I want to buy juice. So they started buying juice. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I, I'm on to something. So I put together a juice cleanse program because I know that juice cleansing is just very, very beneficial for anybody that's, you know, thinking about juicing in general. So I put together this program based off of what fruits and vegetables are good for detoxing your body and eliminating waste. So once I put that together, um, my first client did a seven day cleanse. And from there, it's just kind of like skyrocketed. Every week I'm getting more and more clients that are interested in trying this and people keep coming back. They, you know, some people do it once a month as a jump start. Some people do it every three months or so, or some people just buy juice and they want to have juice every morning for their first two meals. So, um, so, you know, it's just based off of what you want to do, but my company, we offer juice cleanses, however many days you want to do it for, um, $75 a day. And it's all 100% fresh, organic fruits and vegetables. And, um, 
for this podcast, I'm actually offering anybody that's listening, I'm going to be offering a coupon code. The coupon code is um, free lunch 20. If you go to my website, um, www.sincerelyraw.com and you order a juice cleanse, you get 20% off by using that code free lunch 20. And, um, the only thing is that currently at this moment, we do not ship. We, so we are just offering this for those that live in the DMV area, but we will, um, get shipping within the next, um, 90 days. So stay tuned for that. And once we do, um, get shipping going, I will still offer that coupon code for your listeners. Yeah, we teaming with 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 Danny BG. This is something that when 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 we when I find people that are passionate and people that have shown um, changes and they have interesting stories, and then on top of that they have the knowledge. You know, you have to team with these people. So we got to figure out how to continue to team with you, Danny, because your passion and what you're doing is really inspiring to a lot of people. And we need this. I mean, we we started the conversation off talking about kind of the differences in the East Coast and the West Coast. And what we find out is that in those regions, people are seeming to be more health conscious. Um, they're, they're more uh, paying more attention to what they eat and the type of foods that they digest. And this is something that we want to see more in our region to where blood pressure and diabetes and heart disease are prevalent amongst our people, especially in our community. And and she said it earlier, it's just about coming to that agreement with yourself that you want to do these things to improve your well-being and, and improve your health and your lifestyle. So we need this. And, and by us teaming together, we can introduce this and, and make this something that people will really run to in the South. Absolutely. I mean, I I lived in the South for a while, and so I know – how it how it is as far as the food and I loved I truly enjoyed my time living in the south because at that time I was eating whatever I wanted but I did um, gain a considerable amount of weight at that time but for those of you that are listening that might want to change or um, or or maybe you you're you're just kind of thinking about it just know that whatever condition that you have like if you are on high blood pressure pills or cholesterol or you got diabetes or whatever it is just know that it's not, that's not your destiny. You have the option and the opportunity to change as long as you change what you're eating. You know, your surroundings might be, you might not have the best things as far as um, vegan options and, you know, healthy uh, salad, like restaurants in your area, but you have a grocery store and you can make op, you can make the decision to make better um, better choices when you're, when you're going in there. It might take some practice, but your life is worth it and you can get off of those pills and save yourself some money. I mean, a lot of people think it's healthy. I mean, it's expensive to eat healthy, but actually the exact opposite is true. It's actually less expensive to eat healthy in the long run. You might spend a little bit more on your food now, but I'm telling you, cancer is very expensive. Diabetes is very expensive. Death is very expensive. So if you make your decision to eat you know, eat a healthier diet now, you'll live a longer life and you're going to live a longer life without having any really medical issues because you're feeding your body the things that it needs to thrive instead of the exact opposite. And that's no lie. The, the medication industry is the new trap. They're coming out with new medications, more expensive medications every day. So yeah, it would behoove you to do whatever you can to prevent getting on those medications. And this is coming from somebody that deals with them day in and day out. This in, this inspiring stuff, sir. Like I said, the first thing I'm going to do when when Danny leaves is, is, is Google these pesticides because I definitely need Parasite. to get <laughs> these, Parasite. these parasites. Par- <laughs> no, nah, bro, you don't want no pesticides. No, these, these parasites. Excuse me. I'm, that's the first thing I'm going to do because I'm I'm nervous. Man. Dan, I want to ask this question um, because there's a lot that, that goes into getting to this point and, and getting where you've gotten in your journey. What would you say has been the most difficult element in doing what you've done? Hmm. The most difficult part is probably staying focused and not listening to those around me or being negatively influenced, uh, you know, with the people that I'm with, because, you know, the people that I love, I'm not going to get rid of them because they don't do the same lifestyle that I do. So 
it was difficult to be around others while they're drinking or while they're eating ribs and I'm just eating a salad. So, you know, at first it was hard, but then once I really made the decision on why I'm doing it and I watched a lot of documentaries, I researched a lot, it became more comfortable because I became more comfortable within myself and what I was doing. So I say, you know, anybody that's looking to start, just start. It doesn't matter how much you know, how much you don't know, just start and you can find the information slowly. Even if it's one meal a week that you're changing, just go ahead and change that and then build on that. But it's only as hard as you make it. If your mindset is right, it's not going to be difficult at all. It might be challenging because you are learning something new. You're learning how to eat, you know, all the rules that you knew before go completely out of the window. Like portion control, I don't know nothing about portion control because I eat what I want, I eat as much as I want, and my body does better the more that I eat as long as I'm eating within my my parameters. But um, I just say just start, and if you're ready for it, it'll, it won't be that hard. I'm, yeah, I'm we, along the way. Yeah, we've, got, we've got a lot of information here, and uh, um, it's something to get people up and, and, and to really look into this go visit the website and start looking at information because I'm I'm telling you I haven't gone to to the degree that Danny has but I do know that in making changes getting away from all that processed food uh, uh, um, large amounts of meat your body your body feels better I, I can attest to that so um I just I just want everybody to check it out and, and let's let's um, let's support this business and, pr- and support this passion. Can you give the people again mm-hmm. all your information? Websites, blog site, um, Instagram, etc. Now she's taking over the microphone. She's moving <laughs> it out my hand, and <laughs> she's natural. You can't, you can't knock. You can't knock the hustle, bro. <laughs> Okay, so my um, for Sincerely Raw, the juice company, it's um, Sincerely Raw on um, Instagram. That's also the website, www.sincerelyraw.com. If you want to follow my life, my vegan lifestyle blog um, and Instagram, that is One Rawsome Life, O N E R A W S O M E L I F E. And that's on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook as well, One Rossum Life. And um, then if you click on the link in my bio on One Rossum Life Instagram, you'll get connected to my blog. Then my personal um, Instagram page is Vegan Fit Danny. And on that, I'm just showing personal things, like me working out, training for my fitness competition coming up in 12 and a half weeks. Uh, what I eat all day and you know I include the people I love so you can definitely see how I live every day and then um, again I do want to remind those that are in the DMV area if you order online starting tomorrow I'm going to run this for the DMV area from now until till uh, Labor Day so I'll run the sale for a little bit over a week and you get 20% off if you use free lunch 20 on um when you check out then once shipping gets um gets put into the to the mix then i will let you know so that you can extend that to those that are not in the area and we can get them fresh juice that really that really works um a lot of our listeners are um in the south so definitely we want to re reintroduce this free lunch 20 when we figure out the shipping and if you need help we can help you kind of research to see what we can find out to kind of help you ship that as well. So, uh, BG, any closing words and how can the people reach us? Man, I just appreciate Danny for taking time to come on and just giving us this, this, this insight on, on lifestyle changing, you know what I mean? Because this is just one element. And I think I'm a firm believer that something as simple as making a change in your dietary habits leads to a lot of other things. Um, it leads to you being wanting to hit that gym more often. And then it gives you the clarity to do more things with your day to day life. So I'm just greatly appreciative for her taking time to come hang with us here at the free lunch podcast. If you want to get in contact with us, check out this podcast or any other ones, hit us up free lunch podcast.com. Also, Twitter, Free Lunch Pod C, and check for us on Instagram, Free Lunch Podcast. And don't forget, we also on YouTube, Free Lunch Podcast TV, Free Lunch TV. Check us out. Check us out on YouTube. And uh, for all you listeners, um, Free Lunch 20, 
Um, make certain that if you in this area, you definitely use that use that code. We want to support this business and this entrepreneur. So definitely do that, and um, make certain you get on Google and you want to Google what is it? Par- parasites. Yeah, parasites. Yeah, Google Google that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Google that. <laughs> get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, get rid of them. <laughs> so this has been another free lunch podcast production. Uh, we got my man BG on the on the ones and twos, and definitely want to shout out to to um, to Thomas Allen Collection and BG. What's yeah. the what's the watch party? You uh, got the information on that in front of you, man. I will have it. Uh, the watch party. So we're talking about for the uh, Chick Fil A uh, Classic Auburn versus Louisville in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, got a watch party that's going down. Uh, 656 Sports Bar and Grill. That's on 656 Prior Street in Atlanta, Georgia. It's three miles from the Dome. Uh, The game starts at 3.30, so I'm guessing this is going to start well before the game, probably like 11 or so. Free entry, live DJ. We're going to have hookah, $5 drinking food special. So this is for the Chick-fil-A kickoff game in Atlanta, Georgia. The Marvin Tigers versus the Louisville Cardinals. Come watch the game with us. Saturday, September the 5th. That's Labor Day weekend, right? Yes, it is. Man, y'all changing my plans all the way around, but I will be there. Until next week, Free Lunch Podcast, home of the New South Movement. We out of here. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. Let's go, let it go now. Let it go, let's get it. Get it, get it, got em, got em. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. Let's go, let it go now. Not a problem, no lie for that old block. So sign away for that bull rock. Super small, handcrafted, all this size. No, they know not. Flow tougher than tough town. Blacker than the ground, they drum line. No overdose, I'm overwalk. I'll be away from crunch time. Be everywhere like sunshine. I lead right across. Punchline, I beat the track. I eat the track. Brown paper breakfast. Lunchtime, dinner date, dessert tray. Wrong with all. Flow hungry, you see the sign between the line. It's G's only. No dummies, I flow lovely. They go nutty. They catch feeling these hoes touch. Yeah, I tell that job off. No bunch. No awaken. Home study. But you're so pretty, bless your soul, sometimes the best way to touch it, stand up, huh. let's go, let's go, let's get it, let's go, let it go now, nah. let it go, let's get it, huh. get it, get it, got em, got em, huh. let's go, let's go, let's get it, let's go, let it go now. Nah. Before I chose the path, the path chose me. This is a large plan, divine decree.